This is part six of renovating a vintage workshop type steam engine. 24 hours have now elapsed since I applied the milliput to the casting and the milliput is solid enough to work. By temporarily fitting a couple of the studs, this allows me to use the steam chest as a guide so I can profile the milliput to the same shape as the steam chest. Using milliput for this repair, as opposed to car body filler, it makes for a very strong job. And here you see me using my small minicraft drill with a drum sander to initially roughly remove the excess milliput. When the milliput is fully hardened, this will be a very strong repair. I profiled the milliput on the port face in the same method I showed in one of the previous videos by running the entire cylinder and port face up and down a piece of wet to dry sandpaper on a metal block. I always keep one of these kind of pens in the workshop it's sort of a ballpoint pen, but not like a biro. It's got more ink in it, and the ink doesn't dry out like a felt tip, so it's quite useful for general marking out. And here, by fitting the steam chest and drawing round it, I can get the exact profile of the steam chest transferred to the repair. Then, by using my Minicraft drill with a drum sander, followed by some coarse sandpaper, I will be able to exactly match the repair to the shape of the steam chest. It's a good idea at this stage to spray a little primer on the work. It makes it much easier to see where you are with things. And as you can see here, I still need to remove a very small amount of milliput to make it match the steam chest casting. This next part of the renovation is very important, but very tedious and very dirty. To start with, I'm removing the connecting rod and the eccentric rod from the crankshaft. As I've mentioned many times before, this needs to be a sympathetic restoration, not a total rebuild. I can see one or two chunks out of the crank web, but this is not a problem. It is an old engine designed to do a job of work. The main thing about this crankshaft is that it's in quite good condition. So all I need to do really is clean it up. And for this, I'm using a drop of oil and some wet to dry sandpaper. I just work my way down the grades of wet to dry paper until I get a good finish. In my workshop videos, I try not to show dangerous operations. This operation I'm about to show you on the video can be dangerous. It depends how you approach it. With the crankshaft fitted in the three jaw chuck in the lathe and rotating at a fairly high speed, I'm using a piece of wet to dry sandpaper to clean the outer parts of the crankshaft. It's very important when doing this not to firmly grip the sandpaper onto the work. That way, the work will not grab the sandpaper but I must stress this can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. As I'm getting quite old now, it's the only excitement I get in my life these days. I've given up the Arctic exploration and the hang gliding and the free fall parachuting. So now I just stick to putting things in the chuck and putting sandpaper on them. Anyway, when you've safely removed the crankshaft from the chuck with all your fingers present and correct, I would recommend putting some oil on it. Just rub some light machine oil on the whole thing. This will help prevent the newly cleaned part from going rusty. Moving on, it's now time to clean up the connecting rod, the big end brasses, and the crosshead. This is the crosshead, it's a big lump of cast iron. This can be cleaned up again by rubbing it on a piece of wet to dry sandpaper. And the same goes for the connecting rod itself. I actually cleaned up the big end brasses on my polishing spindle. But I didn't want to show that in this video because I didn't want to put too much excitement or danger in one episode. The cleaning up of the eccentric rod is exactly the same process as cleaning the connecting rod. In the next episode, I will be working on the bed of the engine. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.